Hi everyone, Kier here. Today I want to share with you another project, not strictly related to data visualization, but more about you know data art and music creation. Namely, how can we create a simple drum machine with cables? So to do that, we will need several elements. The first ones would be, of course, like sounds. So we'll go over how, where to find some uh, nice uh, wave samples for drums then how to orchestrate everything inside cable so that you can really play uh, with the music. So maybe let's hear it. All right now, well, the pattern that you listen to is completely, of course, you can tune it, you can change it. Maybe it's a, it will be a bit more complex to go over like the whole thing, but I'll give you all the tools that you need to create your own. Uh, basically, I spent like an hour just refining my beat, you know, so that it will uh, sound nice, but uh, the technology and the, like, the technique that we use are it's exactly the same. So you can create uh, anything that you like. So uh, shall we start? First thing you know uh, is you need to go, of course, to the Cables website and uh, create a new project. So go create, empty project, and you basically uh, end up here, right? So as I said earlier, the, the thing that we need to uh, have first are samples, right? So that we can play some music. So I will, there's like, tons of different websites where you can find uh, like drum samples. Uh, I found that this one, was uh, quite okay, it's called free wave samples. And as you can see here, you have drums, uh, like kicks, and so you can go here. It's not really like practical because you need to basically download the kick uh, like here and then listen to it. Like you go here, say, so, okay, maybe I need this one, uh, or, or like attachment, and each time, then you can download it here, for instance, okay, the first one, then you can hear it. Okay, you like, you like, you don't like it. It depends on uh, like your preference. But basically, this is how I, I got my first uh, samples. So what I picked was, of course, a, a drum kick, so bass, bass drum, a snare, hi-hat, and a crash cymbal, so that uh, we have like the basics uh, for our drum machine. So uh, w if you are in here in your project, the first thing that we need to know, as you already know, is to rename it, right? So. Uh, you can uh, go to patch setting and let's uh, call it um, simple drum machine demo maybe. Uh, and then you save it so you don't lose anything, right? Uh, then you go here and if you remember like the previous tutorials that we had together, the first thing that you need to do is to create a main loop, right? So the main loop basically orchestrates everything that we have in the patch and the cables program. Uh, even though we're not gonna use it like uh, very much uh, in this particular example because it's more about, uh, we try to stay away from graphics so that the, the sound that you hear that is not really impacted by uh, how heavy the graphics are. So we try to separate the two as much as possible but of course you need uh, just this uh, loop, um, this block to start. So we have this main loop, we're good. Now uh, let's maybe try to uh, like import some samples. So uh, basically you would go uh, here, um, sorry, you would need to add some files, right? So you go uh, tools, files here, and then you can uh, go patch files. And as you can see here, you can upload stuff. So now you need to go back and find the samples that you like, put them all here so that we can use them uh, in our next uh, in the tutorial. Okay now, so I've uploaded the sounds that I need for this, this project, my bass drum, hi-hat, crash cymbal, and my snare. So they are all here in the patch files. So let's go back now to our uh, project. So 
the first thing we'll probably need to do is to find a way to play them, right? To play the samples. So fortunately, the cables team came up with the uh, nice uh, sample player, brand new, out of the box, was actually released uh, yesterday. We tried to work with them so that uh, it was uh, working well on mobile uh, phone as well. So uh, how do you play a sample? First, you can uh, add uh, maybe a sidebar so that we you know, have uh, uh, things to, to play and, um, and stop the music. Otherwise, it's gonna be annoying if you want to uh, like reset everything. So uh, to, do have, to have a play button, there's also a play button um, that shows basically a play button in here when you open the patch. It's easier for people to understand that, okay, you can play and uh, you know, the music doesn't come, come out, out of nowhere. So what does it need, this play button? Well, uh, the first thing is a trigger. So we'll, come, we'll take that from the main loop. This is like very, uh, so the main loop will you know, trigger this uh, play button so that we can you know, interact with it. Uh, and also, as you can see, uh, here you have some different elements like the next button, you have click or not clicked, uh, state, uh, the element itself, so the, the basically the HTML file. And uh, here, like the, a, a click button, which is just a Boolean, right? So we can use that maybe to trigger the sidebar so that, you know, here our sidebar is visible. We can call it, uh, I don't know, controls controls and we will add uh, maybe two buttons there so uh, I don't know maybe uh, like the a play button so we can just look for a button okay I have a button it says okay to work this up needs to be a child of sidebar so I can just uh, connect things here and maybe I call um, and the button I will call it uh, you know play um, so we will have here this play will basically launch the whole sequence at the beginning, but then w once you are like in the patch, you can play and probably stop the music with those buttons. So um, this is what I did in my um, uh, example. You have the play button, you can copy paste it, then you can call it the stop button, right? Um, and then to uh, basically show this sidebar, we will probably need to click at least once here. So. Here we have the, this, this node at the beginning, this port says visible true and here click false. So if I connect those, when I click, the sidebar will appear, right? And then once I'm in the patch, I can play, stop, I can do whatever, but at least I don't see the button again. So this is just a nice uh, uh, way of, you know, introducing uh, people to our patch and we know that it's gonna be about that music. So don't forget to regularly save Control S or Command S on Mac and let's uh, continue. So we have our play and stop uh, button. Um, of course, we need to uh, also maybe able to control like the beat. This is something that we will introduce uh, a bit later. But look, when you play and stop, you have like two triggers, right? Two ways of activating stuff. When you click, this will trigger this part. When you click this one, will trigger this part. So the idea here is maybe to set the state of our patch, whether or not you want, we want it to, to play and then uh, connect this to a sample so that we can play the sample and stop the sample if we need to. Okay, so uh, how do we do that? Uh, it's quite easy. There's an operator called trigger boolean. Yes, basically says, okay, this is connected to true, this uh, to false. And when I click, look at the output here. This is false right now. If I click here, it's going to be true, false, true, false. So this gives us a nice way of, of, of knowing whether like the music should be playing or stopped, right? So this is a way of controlling uh, the music by just uh, connecting to this uh, output. So uh, maybe let's try to put uh, one sample, right? So how do you do that? It's, uh, it's easy to have two nodes. The first one is called audio buffer, audio buffer holds an audio file sample in buffer. And you click here and now you can just, you know, get uh, the samples that you took before. If you're using a WAV file, make sure that the WAV file is 16 bits to be supported by all browsers. But by default, it's 16 bits if you download them from the free WAV uh, samples so that you should be, uh, you should be okay. 
Uh, now you have I have my sample, but I need a way to play it, right? This is just holding the, the file in memory. So there's a new op called sample player, which is quite tricky and like the internals to so that it works well on all browsers and mobile mobile phone and stuff. But basically what it needs is the play sample you connect from the audio buffer. And here it's just uh, you know a trigger. So here, if it's just a sample, I can just connect the play button. And if I try, I don't hear anything because I'm what, what's missing is the output. So here, it's actually playing, but you don't hear it. So to, to hear the sound, you need another node called the output node, which sends an audio signal to your speaker, and then you can connect here. And if all is well, you should hear it. So we have a kick. Okay, it's nice. If you copy this four times, then you can, you know, have the kick, the snare, hi hat, and crash. But to make a drum machine, you need to orchestrate everything, right? So we need to be a bit more complex in the way we, you know, um, create uh, the, the the whole algorithm to play. So, but at least now, for now, we have a sample player, which is pretty cool, if you if you, if you ask me. So let's maybe well, we can keep it if you want or we can put it on, on, on the side so it doesn't bother us when we implement the rest. By the way, I have, um, you see my cables are straight lines, my, my, yeah. If you want to change, you can go here, my preference, and switch to curved lines. It's a matter of preference. I think it's easier to have straight lines when you want to uh, uh, tidy things up at the end, but by default, I think this will be like the, the default, you can go here. And, and change the, the samples. Okay, so all is well, we have a, a kick that plays. Now we need a way to basically have a clock, right? Something that counts time, and that would, in our case, count a beat, beats. So you will start and you would say, oh, I need uh, something that, you know, goes, that is very regular, that goes maybe uh, like, uh, like the basic BPM would be, uh, you know, beat per minute. And if you take 60 bit per minute, it means that you have one bit once every second. So we need some operator, some blocks that basically triggers once every second. And of course, we need to be able to tune it and to accelerate or slow it down. So how do you do that? There are several ways, but I think the easiest one I found is just to use a regular uh, uh, timer, right? So uh, if you go here and you put the timer, timer says, see, when I put the timer, it's already counting, right? The seconds are like increasing and I can reset it and it goes back to zero. So if we reset, you can already start uh, connect the stop button to the timer so that when we stop, it goes back to, uh, to the beginning. But there's another uh, uh, thing that we need to take into account. It's the play uh, button, whether we should play or not. So if we connect the result here to the timer, check it out. If I press stop, this uh, Boolean is false. It takes the stop button and goes here, it's false. It's stopping the clock and it reset it at the same time. So it, we always go back to zero, zero, right? So this we call it, we can call it uh, master clock if you want. Master clock. All right. Okay, so with this, everything now needs to you know, uh, basically stem from this block. So this counts for everything that all the music that we're gonna create. Okay, so the other parameter that we have in the timer is the speed, right? We have four parameters. Sync to timeline, we don't need it. We don't need the timeline yet, but uh, we're not ever like for this patch, but uh, you have the speed. And the speed is good because you can you can increase the clock, so basically it counts faster or slower. So if you think about it, this will definitely be something that we could relate to or the BPM, like how many pulsation per minute we have in the piece, right? So uh, maybe to be able to control that, we need to uh, add uh, another slider so it, it's easier to manipulate. So let me do that. Here, add a slider. 
okay put it here rename it to uh, bpm change the range i would say the minimum let's say it's 60 so it's easier to play with maximum 200 it goes by one by one and the default is 120 okay i save my patch don't forget to save your patch uh, regularly otherwise it's going to be uh, uh, you know uh, difficult if you lose anything sometimes you need to reload the patch so just to make sure uh, so we're good now we have the so if i connect this ppm now uh, and i divide it of course because this is this goes from 60 to 200 and so basically when it's 60 when i go here and 60 the timer counts normally the speed is one right but if i go 120 i multiply i go twice as fast so i just need to take this value of the slider divided by two divided by 60 sorry divided by 60 connect here my bpm value and then use that as the speed so by default when my bpm is 60 it counts normally let's let's, let's try again plays once uh, let's disconnect that and go here count so it counts normally one second five six seven okay now if i increase here it's counting faster right it's 120 will be twice as fast see okay so now we have a way of controlling the bpm basically and you know making our timer go faster slower or faster as we need great let's save again so what do we need now um now maybe we could try to orchestrate right the so maybe we need also a way to stop everything if we don't want to play anymore uh, i use the uh, and i will show you how to do that uh, also but we can you know tune things as we uh, go along so here i have the timer but it's just counting it doesn't give me any impulsion or triggers it's just counting it counts more or less fast depending on the slider that i play with here now I need a way to, you know, give send impulsion so that we can play the kick here, wait, play the snare, wait, play the crash, and so forth. So how do you do that? Well, check it out. If you just add the floor operator, so what floor what it does, it just you know returns the largest integer less than equal. So basically removes the floating points after the counter. It would just count one, two, three. Let's let's see what it does. You play. You see, it just remove the, the thing after the, dec the decimal part and you only have the integer value. So we need, now this is just a value, it's a number, but we need a way to transform this number into a trigger. And there's a cool operator that can do just that. It's called trigger, there's several rules, but gets, for instance, this one, trigger if increased. So you know that this is counting. So it goes from zero to infinity. So each time we have a new uh, second, or a new uh, number, like round number, we can basically connect it to here. And this trigger, if it increases, will, you know, uh, fire. And now if I put this here, the sample player, and connect this here, we should have kicks. And I can, you know, play with the BPM and stop everything. I hope that you can hear it uh, in the with the sound. Uh, so here it's good. We already have um, a simple kick, right? If you do electronic music, this is all you need, right? You need a kick, maybe a 120 or uh, like 30, and then you can sing along, you can dance. Everything is made. I'm kidding, but you get the idea. So this is good. This gives us all the beats that we need, right? The pulsation to orchestrate uh, all our instruments, our sounds in our case, okay? So what, what else can we do? Uh, well, we can, uh, you know, um, add more instruments. We could do that. Or we could start also to uh, think about how do we orchestrate uh, and, you know, and say, okay, I want to have a kick here. I want to wait three beats and then I want to kick again two different ways. So we need a way to basically know where we are in the bar, right? Are we at the beginning? 
This gives us, by the way, the quarter note. So the, um, what a quarter note is, if you know music, it's this one in the measure. And uh, then you can have go twice as fast or four times as fast. And you, know, and you can have divide, subdivide the, the, the beat so we can go faster and then slower. And the way of doing that is to use subdivisions that we will uh, do uh, after. So now, okay, we're good, we have this. So let me check my patch. Um, maybe we need a way to, yeah, orchestrate. I think this is the, the nice uh, uh, way to do that. So basically, right, I need a way to know where I am in the bar so that I can say, I want to kick here, I want to wait two beats, and then I want to another kick here, and then I want to wait three beats, and then another kick here, right? So for now, in cables, there's no, um, automated way to do that. So we basically need to uh, connect things by hand, actually as you would do in an audio creation software. But the, as you will see, the visual is not really, uh, for now, uh, like straight built in for audio. So we need to use another trick, which can be useful if you want to orchestrate also uh, 3D scenes or any other type of orchestration. So how do you do that? Uh, you can use a route trigger. So what does it do? Check it out. Triggers one of the outports value index switch case. So but it's a switch. Here I need to have the, the main trigger, so I'll put it there, right? And here, depending on the value, it goes, this goes by default, but here, for instance, will be the first trigger because the value is zero. So if I play, here it's always zero. So each time I, I if I put the flow mode, so let me go back to the, remember if you press F here, you have the flow mode and it really helps uh, for music. And as you can see, this is always zero. So it always trigger the first uh, value. Okay. If you put it here, it's uh, basically that like bypasses everything and connects the, uh, but um, as you would for a regular node. But if you go here, this is trigger one, two, up to, uh, 23. So it's in total from zero to 23. We have 24 triggers and this is the default one. So now if you want to, have, um, for instance, like this is our kick, right? So let me add some other stuff. Uh, here I can go and add the hi hat for instance. Okay. So this will play and I will need to connect to my output. Now let's say I want to have the hi-hat, uh, I don't know, I want to connect it to like first uh, beat, maybe the once every two beat. So you go here, let's play now, let's try. But now you need to wait to sequence, right? So then in theory, this will go zero, one, two, and three and four, but uh, I need a way to switch, right? To count and to, uh, to, to orchestrate everything. So uh, I can just, for instance, take the value that I have here. This will count, run from zero to infinity and say, okay, now I have uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have seven uh, inputs, right? Three, six, seven. So I need to count from zero to six or seven out input so that I, you know, I trigger this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. So by using this uh, value here that counts, I can use another operator that you may know called the modulo operator. And what does it do? It just outputs the reminder after the division of one number by another. So, but if we divide, um, you know, um, the division by like zero divided by seven, the reminder is zero. One divided by seven, the reminder is one because it's zero comma something, right? So the cool thing is when it reaches one, so the seven divided by seven, for instance, they will go back to zero because it means you are multiple of seven. So 14 will be zero, right? Because you, it's, you can divide 14 by seven and the reminder is zero. It's exactly a multiple of four, uh, 14, right? So of seven, sorry. So if you go that and you uh, put this here in the first uh, input, and then you say, okay, I need uh, seven, ports here. If I check here, let, let me disconnect, just show you the output here when I play. 
this will count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's six and zero, be good, right? So this is how, how this, the whole thing counts. So now you have an idea of how we can use that to basically orchestrate and to switch to all the different values that we have uh, here in our route uh, trigger. So uh, let me show you. Now, if we connect this output here to our switch value and we play, let's listen. See, but it's missing one beat, I think. It would be eight beats. But let's let's uh, remap this. I don't know. I don't like the hi hat, but uh, so it's oh, it's a bit annoying to have to like disconnect stuff. But if we need like a hi hat on every beat, well, we can always use this because this is the the default value. So this will like trigger at every beat. So let's try again. But it's seven. I think it would be much better to have something around so that we, we usually in Western music, we are multiples of four and eight. So let's try again. Okay, now we need maybe a snare drum, right? Maybe this will be nice as a snare drum. So with this, you can, you can already, you know, make a very cool uh, beat and this will, uh, basically give you the whole idea for the, the, the beat machine, but let's, let's add it. So copy paste my sample player. I had it here. I change the sample, uh, in my audio buffer. I go, maybe I need the snare drum. Uh, usually you can also use the, the crash as the first beat. So, um, let me organize a bit stuff like this. And if you don't like to have, like me, you don't have to, you don't need, uh, or you don't like to have so many like uh, wires that go all over the place. A cool technique would be to separate the orchestration, then the, the quantizer, then from the playing part. So how do we do that before we move on to the uh, other uh, sounds? Let me, let, me sh let me show you. You have the trigger here. There's something called trigger send. So basically this is just like a reference, right? You go uh, here and we can call this one, create a new one. We will rename it as the kick. So now every time we connect something here, it goes in a variable in our patch. Now we can pull this variable out, right? And trigger, see, send and trigger receive. And basically now take the name like kick and allows us to, you know, separate everything. So here I have my kick again. I can play and this will get triggered uh, anytime I want. There's another operation that uh, operator that you can use if you want to mix the sound more or less like strong kick, but uh, you know, uh, uh, low uh, hi-hat or snare drum. There's a small sound mixer that you can implement. It's just one node. So instead of having to connect everything to the output, you can basically disconnect it, uh, put the mixer in like this. And uh, like the first input would be uh, in here in our case, uh, the, um, the hi-hat for instance. But let's uh, disconnect everything and try to clean things up. So you are here, I have my kick, I put this in my first, sorry, my first input. So it's, it's gonna be cleaner, right? You're gonna put, this is like the playing part. So maybe let me put a comment. Uh, you know, uh, Playing. Okay, here, and this is the orchestration. So uh, we go here. What is this? This is the snare drum. Okay, so we create another. We can copy paste it. We just uh, create a new one and we call it snare. Right. We copy paste it. Click create a new one and we call it hi hat. And the last one, we copy paste it <clears throat> and we create a new one. We call it crash, right? So here we just now need to connect to those uh, values and then we, we separate everything. So let's put this here for now, disconnect that. And now we copy this again. This is the receiver, the kick. Now we'll call it, uh, we'll take the hi-hat, put it there. Um, 
try to align. This is why I, I told you, or maybe uh, it's better to have uh, sometimes the, um, you know, straight lines because uh, it, it looks a bit cleaner. So if you align everything, you connect that, sorry, you connect this to here. And uh, we continue, this is our snare drum. We, uh, you copy that again. This is basically how you create all your instruments, right? So you have your snare drum, you copied it here. You put it there at the mixer. And the final instrument that we need, the final sample basically, uh, is the crash. So I copy everything like this, I'm crazy. Put it there and just, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm silly. You can just uh, replace that with the crash. Okay. So now we have, this is the sound and this is how we orchestrate everything. So let's try again if it works again. So I just have a kick, right? Now, if I need to have my hi-hat, like at every beat, I can put it here. Okay, I'm saving stuff. Now, snare. One, two, three, so zero, one, two, maybe we, we try it here. So we, usually it's four beats, right? So uh, let, let's count uh, three and go back here. The kick once every four beats. So zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. Then you can do maybe, okay, two, two kicks. So zero, one, two, three. Zero, simple stuff for now. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah, maybe I messed up. It doesn't matter. Let's try. Let's hear it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the modulo here just is eight value. So if we go from zero to 23, we need the modulo to be 24 entries, right? So now we'll basically show it here. I think it is, yeah. So uh, at the beginning, you can really, uh, you know, uh, do whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's just uh, here we'll finish by kick, kick one and kick at the beginning, we'll finish but tw two kicks. Let's try again. So it's the signature is a bit odd because it's a multiple. Uh, basically, to finish the beat, we would need thirty-two start, no, thirty-two bits, and here we have only have twenty-four, right? So to finish the pa pattern, you would also need. Uh, I can show you later, maybe, uh, put another route trigger. And uh, because in here we go up to 24, but is, if you only need 16, right? So you make sure that it, it's it's perfect. You go here, you put 16, and you can count zero to 15 here, and this should uh, go back to the beginning. So I can disconnect stuff. So and let's just hear it again. And here it sounds more natural, which makes sense because 24 is three out of four bars. So you would, if you you need to go up to 32 to make sure that it, it, it look it loops uh, uh, perfectly well. Okay. So for now we we'll just keep it simple with 16. We have our kick, and this is why I told you maybe you should use the straight lines because if you like your kick pattern, you can just put it on the side and look everything is aligned like like this. And when you click. If you have like curved edges, I can show you, uh, it's not going to be as uh, beautiful, right? It's going to be a bit messy here. This is why I use the, the straight uh, edges in this particular case. All right. So now we go up to zero to 16. Now we need to put some snare, right? I don't know. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now you just need to count, right? Uh, like this, maybe. No. 
I don't like it. You know, you can change it. No, I want. And this is how you would play with the with the snare, right? So. Okay, I like this one better. Sim very simple, of course, but uh, basically you have one kick, one empty value, one snare, one empty, one kick, empty snare, empty kick, empty snare, and I should go. And you can add one more, right? Like at the, the final value here, could also be a snare and then we'll loop. No, <laughs> sorry, I messed up. Well, you get the idea. So you play with your with your snare. We need a crash. Maybe the first uh, one should be a crash as well. And let me go back to the beginning. Okay, we need to reset stuff. Um, maybe my crash is not a crash actually. Uh, let me check. Yeah, this is why. Uh, it was a snare. Now it's a crash. I copied. I was too fast. Let's try again. And we have our beat. So this will conclude the first uh, part of the this drum machine. I think you have all the tools that you need. Maybe in the second part, I will go over. Uh, how to can uh, put more uh, route triggers? It's exactly the same uh, technique, so that you can expand the size of the length of your U beat. Here it's only 16. Now, what happens if you want to do subdivisions, or if you're going to go up to you know 48, uh, I don't know 128 uh, bars? You basically you need to put more uh, route triggers. So I will try to do that uh, in the in future video, so we can uh, expand on what we have already. Hope you liked it. And if so, please uh, let me know in the comments, uh, maybe like, subscribe, you know, the usual uh, YouTube stuff. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.